Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Now we need to look at the tools that you can use to modify the clip art and pictures that you've inserted into your publication. Once you insert a piece of clip art or a picture and then select it, the Picture Tools Contextual tab appears with the Format tab displayed. This tab contains the main functions that you can use to quickly and easily format the inserted graphics. The buttons available in the Adjust group, located right here, allow you to make various types of image adjustments to the currently selected picture within your page. For example, you can click the Brightness drop-down button to choose another brightness setting for the selected image. You can roll your mouse pointer over those settings to see what that would look like, and to apply one you would just give it a click. You can likewise click the Contrast drop-down button to increase or decrease the level of contrast or gray level used in the image. Again, to apply one, you would just click on it to apply it. You can also use the Recolor drop-down button to select from one of the many preset coloring tints to apply to the image. Now the image that we are utilizing right now is already tinted, but you'll see what that does. You could also select more variations, if you'd like, from the bottom of that drop-down to open up the Recolor Picture dialog box, and then select a coloring choice from the palette of options that are available. Cancel for now. Now you can click the Compress Pictures button to open a dialog box that allows you to compress one or more images in your page. In the Compress Pictures dialog box, you can check the checkboxes and select the desired option buttons to set your desired compression options. Once you have the settings you desire, you can then click the Compress button to compress the pictures in your page. Now note that this is typically only done for graphics that are intended for web page display, as smaller graphic files tend to load faster. This also will not work with clip art, just photographs like JPEG and GIF files. We'll go ahead and cancel for now. Now you can also select the next button, which is the Change Picture button, could choose change picture, navigate to a new picture, and replace that picture, or you could select remove picture to remove it altogether if you so desire. We'll undo that. The last button in the adjust section is the reset picture button, this one right here, and if you click that it will reset any changes that you've made to the graphic. If you have two pictures selected, you can swap the images in the page so that they will take the other graphics location and formatting. To do this, select the two pictures to swap and then click the swap button in the swap group. So we'll go ahead and select these two pictures. We've inserted another one just for demonstration purposes. Up here in the swap group, we'll select swap and just choose swap. Swap them back and forth. Now you could choose to only swap the formatting as well if they have different formatting applied. You could do that if you so desire. We'll go ahead and remove that second image for now. The next group in the Format tab of the Picture Tools Contextual tab is the Picture Styles group. Let's take a look at that right here. You can click on any picture style shown in this area to apply it to the selected graphic. So you use the drop-down, click one, find one that you like, just like that. Now if you want to add a border to the image, you can click the Picture Border drop-down button, located right here, and from the drop-down menu, you can then click on the color of the border that you'd like to use, give that a click to apply that. Now just like when we were formatting other shapes, you can also select more outline colors, to open up the Colors dialog box and select a specific color or a custom color or a Pantone. Or you could choose 
sample line color and select from an existing color in your presentation here. Now, also note that if you want to quickly change the thickness of the picture border or add a dashed border versus a solid border, you can do that by using the picture border drop-down button as well. All you do is roll over the weight command and then change the weight of the particular border, like that. Or you can roll over dashes and change that to a dashed border if you so desire. You can also click the pattern command, just like we did before. Click on the pattern tab, select a pattern that you like. You can use the drop downs to select a foreground and a background color and click OK to apply a pattern to the border if you so desire. If you wish to create a custom picture shape, then instead you can click the picture shape drop down button and select the desired picture shape to use from the listing of available shapes. Located right here, you would just click one of those and you would see what that would do. I'll go ahead and undo that for now. You can also click the Caption drop-down button to display a listing of the various stylistic categories of captions available to apply to your selected picture. Let's look at that. So we're going to go back up into the Picture Styles group and click on the Captions button. And when you hold your mouse pointer over any captions shown, it will also be shown as a preview, just like many of the other choices, but you can also kind of see what that would look like in the images there. And you can just click one to apply. And then after you've added that in, you can just go in and select it and apply your caption if you wanted to do that. In the Shadow Effects group on this tab, you can click the Shadow Effects drop-down button to select a desired shadow style. Just like we saw before, we can just click one to apply it. Now remember that you can also roll over the color of the shadow command in this drop-down menu. Let's look at that. We'll go down to Shadow Color and change the color of the shadow that's applied to. Give that a click to change that. Now, to the right of that button, you can click the Nudge Shadow buttons to nudge the shadow in the indicated direction. So this works just in the same way that we did with our other objects. So remember, we have our shadow effects here that we apply. And then to the right of that, we have our nudge. We can nudge to the left. We can nudge up, change that. And then, of course, in the middle, we have the button to toggle the display of the shadow on and off. Next, we have the Arrange group here. In the Arrange group, you'll find buttons that allow you to change the placement and text wrapping of the selected image in the document. You can click the Text Wrapping drop-down button in order to select from one of the preset text wrapping options for the selected image. We've seen this before you prefer. Remember that if you have overlapping images in your page, you can click either the Bring Forward or Send Backward drop-down buttons in order to change the order in which the images overlap each other in the stack. So you can Bring Forward or Send Backward, however you want to do that. And of course you can click the Align button to choose from one of the many available alignment options seen all these options before. And of course, just like we did before, we could group and ungroup this with other objects. So you would select another object and then you could group them together. Once they're grouped together, you can move them around and they'll move together like that. And once they are grouped, you can ungroup them by clicking Ungroup. Also, 
just like we saw before, we've got the Rotate button. Give that a click. And you can rotate that image and flip it. Or you can free rotate it if you like, like we did before. Once you see those small green circles, put your mouse pointer over them. It'll turn into a small circular arrow. Click and drag to free rotate that image however you like. Now, finally, let's look over in the size group over here. In the size group, you'll find the crop button, and you can use this button to remove unwanted or excess parts of an image. Click the crop button to enable the cropping tool. Like that. Now to use it, just click and drag on any of the cropping handles that appear around the graphic inward to crop it. If you make a mistake, you can uncrop by dragging the cropping handles back outwards again, or by clicking the Clear Crop button to reset the picture back to its original state. So this is very easy to use. If you wanted to crop inward, we could just click and drag like that. Or if you make a mistake, you don't like that, you can just drag it back out like that. Now, after you try to increase the size of the image by using the crop tool. So if I drag out and try and increase it like that, then you'll see that we'll activate some buttons for you here. Fit, Fill, and Clear Crop. Clicking the Fit button will fit the picture to fit within the cropping border that you've created while maintaining its aspect ratio. Clicking the Fill button below that will fill the selected cropping border while maintaining the aspect ratio. Clicking the Clear Crop button will remove cropping from the picture while retaining the previous cropping border. So I could Clear Crop and set it back to where it was. Now also in the Size group here, you can use the spinner arrows at the right end of that group to change the height or width in the text boxes to increase or decrease the height or width of the selected image. Also note that if you need to make very specific changes to the size of the image, you can do so through the Size tab within the Format Picture dialog box. To open this dialog box, just click the Size dialog button in the lower right-hand corner. On the Size tab, which we see here, of the Format Picture dialog box, you can enter the height and width into the text box provided. Height and width. Notice that if you want to adjust the relational aspect, meaning the height to width ratio of the selected image, you would need to ensure that the Lock Aspect Ratio checkbox is deselected in the Scale section first, down here. Then you can enter the height and weight independently if desired. In addition, you can enter a degree of rotation to apply to the image by using the rotation spinner buttons right here. So if you want to rotate it, you can do it that way as well. Down in the scale section below that, you can enter a percentage into either the height and or the width text boxes, and the image will then be scaled by the selected percentage. You can also check or uncheck the two available checkboxes in this section as needed when making size and scale changes. They allow you to lock the aspect ratio and to determine if the ratio used is based on the current image scale or on the scale of the original image. You can also click the Reset button at the bottom of this tab to reset any change made to the size of the image by clicking Reset, and it'll reset those values for you. But once you've finished making any sizing adjustments, you can just click the OK button to close the Format Picture dialog box. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.